Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هو مصرف الأيام والظهور ومجدد الأوقات والأعوام والشهور الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور أحمده وأشكره وهو المحمود المشكور والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده الذي أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وتركنا على محجة بيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيد عنها إلا هالك يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما الا فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار فيا احبه الكرام اوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله فقد فاز المتقون all praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most gracious, the most merciful. And He's the first, nothing is before Him. And He's the last, nothing is after Him. And He's the most high, nothing is above Him. And He's the most near, nothing is nearer than Him. And He's the all-knower of everything, infinitely able, absolutely absolute, and the master of mankind, Dhul Jalali wal Ikram. Our sincere greetings and salutations and much love to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in the Holy Quran, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ وَجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانَ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ When my servants ask you about me, O the Messenger, then tell them, Indeed, I am near, fa inni qareeb, and I respond to the call of one when they call to me, when they pray to me. In another verse, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wa qala Rabbukum duuni astajib lakum." Your Lord has proclaimed, "Call upon me; I'll respond to you." In these two Quranic verses, dear brothers and sisters, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala promised us to accept our dua it's the promise it's the commitment from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if we call him he will respond to us dua it's the private conversation with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our creator our lord our master and dua is the essence of ibadah our beloved prophet said a dua ibada. dua is the form of worship and believe it or not, dua is the most powerful weapon of believers. Dua is like a missile, dear brothers and sisters. Dua is like a ballistic missile. The way a missile reaches its target, if your dua comes out of your heart full of sincerity, solemnity and submission, also reaches its target. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, likes the servant who always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again and again repeatedly and continuously the messenger of Allah say Man lam indeed 
who doesn't ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah gets angry with him. Allahu Akbar. Dear brothers and sisters, this is totally contrast and opposite of this dunya. Here in this dunya, if we ask anything to anybody again and again, continuously and repeatedly, he never likes it. He feels disturbance. He gets annoyed. How compassionate Lord we have and how lucky we are. Our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, likes to see we are requesting Him. Our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, likes to see we are crying to Him. Our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, likes to see we are making dua to Him. Many people, dear brothers and sisters, they think can question about dua that is it really that powerful? Dear brothers and sisters, never underestimate the power of dua. Dua is so much so powerful that it can change your qadr. It can change your destiny. We all know and believe that everything is pre-written. But keep in your mind by supplication, by making dua to Allah, it could be rewritten. Dua has the ability to change one's destiny. Our beloved Prophet said, لا يرد القضاء إلا الدعاء ولا يزيد في العمر إلا البر Nothing turns back the divine decree except supplication. And nothing increases the lifespan except righteousness. And our dua should be full of sincerity and emotion. Some of us, they make dua, but their dua is like robotic dua. Why I call it robotic dua? Because no emotion, no sincerity in their dua. They're making dua to Allah, but their heart is careless, inattentive. You see their hands are like this. They raised up their hand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they're inattentive. Their hands are like that, but they're thinking maybe which country will win the next FIFA World Cup. Their hands are like that, but they're thinking other issues. Do you know what our beloved Prophet said about these people? He said, Supplicate to you, Lord, as if you are being answered. You are oversure that you will be answered. And then he said, And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He doesn't respond to the supplication, to the dua that comes from careless and inattentive heart. So please be attentive in your dua. Make dua with full of sincerity and submission. And one of the way to show your sincerity is crying during dua, if possible. It's highly recommended. Crying during dua can remove your all sins. Crying during dua can save you from the blazing fire of Jahannam. Crying during dua can shade you under the throne of Allah, under the Arshullah. Crying during dua can make you so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It shows you humility. It shows you helplessness in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As well as it shows your seriousness of your request to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if possible, during dua, please try to shed some tears, dear brothers and sisters. And be always hopeful. Never be frustrated. Dear brothers and sisters, never be disappointed. Why you are so disappointed? Why you are hopeless? Just keep in your mind, even the dua of shaitan was not rejected. Do you know what was the dua of shaitan? The dua of shaitan was, he said, Qala Rabbi anzirni ila The dua of shaitan was like this. He said, Oh Allah, grant me respite. Oh Allah, give me a chance. Till the day they shall be resurrected. Allah said, okay, you are granted respite. Your appeal, your dua is accepted. So the dua of shaitan was accepted. So why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't accept our dua, dear brothers and sisters? He's our Lord. You and me, the servant of Allah. Every day, in every single prayer, we say, we recite, Iyaka na'bud wa iyaka nasta'in. Oh Allah. We only worship you, O oh Allah. We only seek guidance. We only seek help and assistance from you. So why he won't accept our dua if he accepts dua of shaitan? So never be hopeless in your dua, dear brothers and sisters. And asking dua from others is sunnah. 
ask dua from your parents from righteous people the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they used to ask dua from prophet it's narrated by Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said that his mother Umm Sulaim came to the messenger of Allah and said oh the messenger of Allah khadimuka Anas udu'ullaha lah this is your small servant Anas please make dua for him then Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said Allahumma akthir malahu wa waladahu wa barik lahu fima a'atayta oh Allah increase his wealth his offspring and bless for him whatever you give him and not only this, dear brothers and sisters, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he himself used to ask dua to the companions. Subhanallah alhamdulillah. Once upon a time, it's reported by Umar radiallahu ta'ala, who he said, once upon a time, I came to the Prophet and sought permission for Umrah. He gave me permission. Then just before my travel to Umrah, he said, La tansana ya ukhayya min duaaik. Our beloved Prophet said, Oh Umar, you are going to Umrah? La tansana min du'aik. Don't forget my name in your supplication. Allahu Akbar. So when somebody goes to Hajj or Umrah, what do you say? Please, brother, keep my name in your prayer. Please make du'a for me. It's sunnah, dear brothers and sisters. So ask du'a from your parents. Ask du'a from righteous people. Ask du'a from shuyuk. Even you can ask du'a from your friends and family, dear brothers and sisters. And du'a is an art. For sure, I'm telling you, dua, it's an art. You need to know how to ask. You need to know when to ask to achieve the most of the blessings and grants from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to use the proper timing. You need to know when to ask. And believer, they never work hard. Believers, they work smart. Let me share with you an example of working smart. It's an oral transmitted story of a person who went to Mecca. For Hajj. And during his tawaf around the Kaaba, he got a chance to make dua in Multazam. Do you know what is Multazam? Multazam is known as a place of clinging. Our beloved Prophet, he used to cling his body to this part of Kaaba, I mean Multazam, and used to ask dua to Allah. And the dua in Multazam is accepted for sure. It's a two meter wide area between the door of Holy Kaaba and the Blackstone corner, Hajjul Aswad corner. But it's quite tough to reach at the place of Multazam because of huge crowd. But the person is very lucky. He managed to reach at Multazam. And he see people are crying and making dua to Allah. Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, grant me blessings. Oh Allah, grant me righteous children. Oh Allah, grant me righteous wives. Oh Allah, make me successful in my career. So it, it was quite tough for him to stay in the place because huge crowd. So he's thinking, what dua should I ask to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Just see how he make dua very smartly. He just cling his body to the multazam and made a single dua. He said, oh Allah, accept all my righteous duas I made in my past and all my duas I'll make in my future. That's it, khalas. Allahu Akbar. This is the example of working smart, dear brothers and sisters. So you need to know how to make dua, when to make dua, to use the best time for making dua, dear brothers and sisters. And finally, since we don't have enough time and the examination is going on, so I'm instructed to deliver a very short khutbah. So my concluding remarks in today's khutbah regarding dua that if your duas are not answered immediately, don't be hopeless. Don't be hopeless, dear brothers and sisters. Because some of our du'as become answered very quickly and some, some of them, they take longer time than we expect. Basically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our du'a in one of the three ways. Number one, we make du'a. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, yes, accepted. Number two, we make du'a. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, yes, but not now. I'll respond at the right time. Number three, we make dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, yes, but I have a better plan for you. Maybe in the akhirah, or maybe by granting other blessings instead of what you are asking for. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wisdom is beyond our imagination. His wisdom is beyond our comprehension. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows 
the best when it is good for us how it is good for us to have it so if any case in any situation any of you duas are remain unanswered please be optimistic be hopeful be content indeed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond with what is best for you inshallah bi'idnillah barakallahu lana wa lakum fil quran al azim wa nafa'ani wa iyyakum bima fihi min al ayat wa dhikr al hakim wa taqabbal allah minna wa minkum tilawatahu innahu huwa sami'u al alim aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al azim li wa lakum fastaghfiru innahu huwa al ghafur ar rahim الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وطبيبنا محمد ابن عبد الله عليه أفضل الصلوات وأتم التسليم وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسانه إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد فاتقوا الله يا عباد الله واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا كلها دقها وجلها أولها وآخرها علانيتها وسرها صغيرها وكبيرها خطأها وعمادها شركها وبدعتها ما علمنا منها وما لم نعلم يا غفور يا غفار اللهم لا تدع لنا ذنبا في مقامنا هذا إلا غفرته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا مجاهدا في سبيلك إلا نصرته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا هي لك رضا ولنا فيها صلاح إلا وفيتها يا الله اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكرك إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان وجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذل من خزل الدين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه كل خير ومن أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين سوءا فجعل كيده في نحره اللهم اهدي ووفق ملك هذا البلد بما تحب وترضى اللهم اجعل هذا البلد آمنا مطمئنا سخاء رخاء وسائر بلاد المسلمين اللهم بارك لنا في رجب وشعبان وبلغنا رمضان اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من البرص والجنون والجذام ومن سيء الأسقام ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر الأدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة